Thank you so much for coming out tonight. I am Susan Laws. I am the department chair of the counseling office um, at the main building at the Lincoln High School. This is Lindsay Danberg. She's the ninth grade counselor here at Ferguson Hall. Um, welcome to our presentation for the class of 2020. I have something in common with you because my daughter, also in eighth grade, will be a freshman next year. And I'm sure you're feeling kind of like I'm feeling like, uh oh. What is all this new stuff? So we're going to go through some things. Um, if you would hold your questions until the end of the presentation, um, and also we know that this is not the best visual, um, but we're working on that. And on our on our Beaver Creek High School web page, we will have a copy of this presentation. Yvonne Edwards, she's one of our um, assistant principals over from the main building. We also have Maria Link with us tonight. She's our special special services supervisor. Um, also here we have Mrs. Cheney, she's our school psychologist, Ms. Amber, um, our ninth grade counselor. And then Mrs. Nan is actually she's housed over at the main building and she's our college credit plus counselor. Some of you may have met her um, during our CCP night, which was a couple weeks ago. Okay, our school day mimics the same school day as Beaver Creek High School main campus. We start at 7.45 and we end at 2.45. Um, we have seven periods a day that are 50 minutes each, and we'll talk a little bit about um, class load in a little bit. Okay, all of our students are assigned blockers, and it, they're usually assigned out of the fourth period. And we don't provide a lock, but we highly recommend that a student bring a lock, and it can be either a combination or a key. Um, students can carry book bags during the school day. That is not a problem. That's okay. Um, and so that's like one of the questions that kids are always asking. That, that could be a big change for me to bring. Dress code, we, really it's common sense. So our students you know, generally don't have a problem where it becomes a problem if a student is wearing um, tank tops or spaghetti straps that show off their undergarments, um, or if they have very, very short skirts or very, very short shorts. Um, students will be asked to, not asked, will be, have to change. Um, and it, it'll be getting worn, but if they don't, then they change into sweatpants um, and then they have to return those buttons to us in a timely manner. No hats. We, of course, don't promote anything with violence, drugs, alcohol, or sex. And we do not promote, you can't have sunglasses unless you have a doctor's note. We have a few students that might need to have sunglasses for a medical condition. And we have a um, handbook online that has um, these rules and guidelines for you guys. Extracurriculars. We have lots of extracurriculars at Beaver Creek High School. We have lots of sports. We have a great athletic web page that you haven't visited yet, um, which has all of our sporting events. We also have lots of intramural sports, um, which are usually in the fall and spring. Um, and there's also information on the web page as well. Band, choir, clubs. Once again, the website. And we're going to go into our information about what your child needs for graduation. Okay, we're going to talk about a couple different things. For your 2020 grads, they need 22 credits to graduate. And I know that's small to read, so I'm just going to tell you what it is, okay? They need four units of English, four units of math, of the four units of math, algebra two is required by the state of Ohio. Science, three credits, and those three credits are physical science, a life science, which is biology, and a advanced science. Advanced science could be chemistry, human anatomy, and physiology. Um, we have several electives that fall into advanced science classes. Um, okay. Social studies. We require 
require four credits of social studies. Two credits, actually two and a half credits are what we would call mandatory credits. So world history is required. Um, and also our 10th grade, it's um, US history is also required. That's a year long class and so is world history. Um, they can take electives both in the freshman year and sophomore year that also could count towards the four total. Um, the state of Ohio requires a half a credit of government. That class could be taken in the junior or senior year, and then um, additional electives. So that gives them 1.5 additional social studies electives that they have to take between now and graduate, or between their ninth grade year and graduation. Physical education. I'm not going to talk about the PE waiver right now, but I will get to that. Um, the state of Ohio requires that all students take a half a credit of PE. Beaver Creek High School, our PE counts as a .25 credit or a quarter credit. That means they must take two semesters of PE to complete their PE credit. There is a caveat to this, and we'll talk about it in a few minutes. It's, a, it's called a PE waiver, and we're going to talk about that. The state of Ohio also requires a half a credit of health and one credit of fine arts between the ninth and 12th grade. We require five electives to get to the 22, and it, they could be extra, say you take extra classes in the science area, like I take physics. It's beyond my three, that counts as elective. Foreign language counts as elective. So most of our students naturally get a lot of their electives through foreign language. Business classes, um, home ec classes, um, our industrial technology classes, all of those are elective classes. We recommend, it's okay, you don't need to go back. <laughs> we, we, ooh, um, we don't require a foreign language in order to graduate from the Beaver, from Beaver Creek High School. So foreign language is not required. However, the state, um, most colleges or universities like to see a minimum of two years. They prefer three years. So what we call that class is college prep. So if your student is a college prep student, they should be taking a minimum of two years of a foreign language. Um, three would be preferred. Okay, we're gonna talk about some testing. The class of 2018 and beyond, if you went to our testing information, that was last week, um, we gave a lot of information. There is more information on our Beaver Creek High School website under popular, but basically what you need to know is that in the ninth grade and the 10th grade, a lot of the testing for the 18 points are given, um, and there's many, many opportunities for students to get to those 18 points. If you need more information after reading the information on the website, or if you want to talk to me about that afterwards, I can give that information to you. College premium. Okay, so the biggest thing in the freshman year is for kids, students, to take courses that they are that are appropriate for them. We want them working and being challenged, but we don't want them working to be so overwhelmed that they can't be successful. And that is a fine balance. Um, and your GPA begins now, technically, if you have an eighth grader that took a honors level, actually any algebra one, I should say, in the algebra one in the eighth grade, um, or a foreign language in the eighth grade, those start your GPA, okay? And what's important about the GPA, it's not everything, and we know that. You know, it also is also the content of what you're taking. But where we see our freshmen sometimes fall short is that they don't know how to time manage, and they sometimes get into a hole, and they don't know how to ask for help. So we have lots of opportunities for students to get free tutoring in our building every day, in the morning. Um, we want them to advocate and talk to their teachers. And that's hard to ask for help. So um, if you can encourage that behavior with your current eighth graders, that would be helpful. But if you, if you find that they're struggling, please reach out to us because there's something that we can do to help them out. Okay, there are several changes to our curriculum for the 2016-17 school year. Okay, English 9. So for English 9, we have a couple different levels of classes. Um, all the courses are gonna be year-long courses. Students have four different options they can choose from. 
we're going to be presenting this information with the student sign-up sheets to them in class tomorrow and Friday um, at Anthony Coy. So they'll begin to see a more detailed description of these. They will want to talk to their teachers about what level of class is appropriate for them um, to help guide them in their decision about what they'll be taking. The classes are um, based thematically, so they can look and kind of decide which ones sound interesting to them and which um, level of challenge they think is most appropriate. Along with those English classes, they'll also have required summer reading. That information is available online starting in May. For social studies, one change that we have for this year is that, um, so every student, one of their required courses is a world history class. So every freshman will take a world history class. This year we have um, a world history class that's weighted at a 4.5, and so it's a little bit of a more challenging class, and so that's something that your students, it is weighted at a 5 point, not a 4.5. Um, so that's something that your students will want to talk to their social studies teacher about and find out if that might be a good option for them. For math, um, you do have to have four credits in math. If you took Algebra 1 as an eighth grader, then uh, you will be taking a geometry class, either regular geometry or scholarship or honors. Um, most of our freshmen will take some form of algebra, and so that's usually the most appropriate placement. Your teachers will help you figure out which one you should be in, um, and we'll double check your credits to make sure that you sign up for the right one. This is one of the major changes that's happening for the freshman curriculum this year. Every single freshman will enroll when they're scheduling next week for a physical science class. Your teachers can work with you to decide whether physical science or advanced physical science is most appropriate for you. Um, and then for a handful of students who would like to um, have the option of accelerating to biology as a freshman, there will be a process to apply and take a test to move into that course. Um, the state of Ohio has a separate process for, the, for accelerating, and so since you're skipping over an entire piece of the curriculum, you have to go through that application process. Um, if students apply for that and take the test and are um, accelerated into biology, they will earn a credit for that physical science class. We are happy to announce that we um, are going to be offering Jay Rodzi here. Um, 9th through 12th grade. There is an application process, but on the scheduling sheet right now, what we're doing is just having them indicate that they want to go into to J. Rodsey. Um, it's It currently is called Aerospace Science, and it's worth one credit. Um, we also have a composition course under English. This is a 4.5 week, so it's an advanced class, and really it's to help students become better writers. Um, so if you have a student that really needs some either writing, they want to write, they want to excel in that, that would be a great program. And we also are very happy to announce that we have an ACT SAT prep. This is something that we've talked about for a long time. Um, in the social studies section, we have current events, American, excuse me, history of American sports, American Civil War, world leaders and legends, and that's also listed in the program of studies. Um, what's different about this is that students really have only had, they haven't had a lot of electives in the ninth grade level, so we're very happy to offer these to our students. Okay, PE waiver option. New for 2016-17. Students who plan or to participate in two seasons of athletics, marching band, cheerleading, or j -Rotsy may apply for a PE waiver. This does not grant credit, but waives the PE requirement to earn a half a credit of physical education upon completion of the plan program. This option is open to going to be ninth graders because it, it, it actually starts in 2016. But it is important that if students do not complete their PE waiver option, by the senior year, we will be enrolling them into PE. I also want to reiterate that this is an Ohio Department of Education policy. Um, it's, so this is not necessarily things that we are saying in here, but what we have to be in compliance with what the state says, um, the Ohio Revised Code. 
And so it is athletics, marching band, cheerleading, or j -Razzi. I can answer those questions after this presentation if you have specific ones about that. Okay, we really do want our students to pick classes wisely um, in looking at what they're taking. Just because a teacher recommends a class doesn't mean that all of the upper level classes that they're recommended for they can take in the same year. What the family needs to look at, as well as the student, is course load. What does their extracurriculars look like? What are their other responsibilities at home? Um, and so our, the biggest issue that we have with students is that when they come into the ninth grade, it is very different from the eighth grade because for the first time they are earning credit towards graduation. That it can become overwhelming and then sometimes their grades suffer because of that. So we want to make sure that the kids are challenged, that they're working their best curriculum that they can, but that they are not so overwhelmed that you know, they can't be successful. That is why we have our program of studies online. It lists every course. It gives a very good explanation, but obviously if you read it and you're still uncertain, is this the right choice for my child? Please feel free to contact myself. I'm Susan Laws, I'm the department chair. You can contact your teachers or your student's teacher because obviously they know your student the best about their skill level. Um, if it's something very specific, but you also know your child too. And I think it's important that we include the parents in the process of our scheduling. Scheduling changes um, are not going to be made next year because there are teacher conflicts or there are changes of mind or poor academic performance due to lack of effort. When we have concerns that are brought to us, we always have a team meeting and ultimately it, you know, the principals make that decision about changes. That doesn't mean we don't want you to talk to us if there's a problem, but we cannot just make changes in August once we started school. It's very difficult. Okay, this is the biggie, okay? Um, your child next week will receive a single-use password. Um, it's a login, and it's um, to log in the course request. They can't lose this document, okay? We encourage a lot of students to take a picture with their phone or hang it on the refrigerator or keep it in a safe place, like bring it home to your parents. That's what my daughter did. Mom, I have my single-use password. I'm like, oh, going on the fridge. Um, and just to let you know, like, my daughter doesn't go to Beaver Creek, so you didn't miss anything. Let's just get my daughter's in the Creek, bro. <laughs> um, your parents, um, you and your parents, this is actually for our students, but we want our students to include you in the process for this. We want you to sit down at the computer, um, look, look at what classes are there. Students will have a very long period from the 11th to the 20th to complete their course requests online. We have a step-by-step -step tutorial, and it's like step one, turn on the computer. Step two, put in your password. Step three, make sure your password is correct in the text. And it's, it's very user-friendly. Um, and we're going to help walk you through the process. There is one very important thing. At the end of the process, there is a submit button. And you cannot click the submit button until the 20th. And that's what I did with my daughter. Like we looked at it, we reviewed, we went back and forth, we put all the classes in, we thought about it, and then at the end it was submit. Once you hit submit, and we want you to hit submit, but before the 20th, like that's important. But if I need to make those changes, I have to contact the counselor, and that's what you guys will have to do as well. Um, this is more for students. We just want them to, this is really a student slide, sorry. Um, we want them to list alternate courses. And it's just in case, hey, I don't get into that class, I have a backup plan. Because the worst thing is when I'm in August, I'm calling a kid, looking them out of bed, going, so what do you want to take this class is closed? So um, we're, we'll talk with them about that. Okay. Since you guys are scheduling from home, um, if you need some help or you have additional questions or you don't have uh, internet access or something like that, I'll be available in room 120 at Ferguson Hall here um, next Tuesday and Thursday from 5 to 7 to answer any questions, physically help you through the scheduling process if you need it. Um, so if you have any additional concerns or need any extra help, um, 
will be available. We will also have some special education staff here. Um, those nights to help with scheduling. Tonight, following this presentation, Amy Mills and Brandy King will be um, in the lecture hall. They are two of our intervention specialists. They're very knowledgeable. So if you have specific questions for a student on an IEP or 504, um, we'll be there to answer some of those questions in the lecture hall right after this.